I'm gonna be showing you three of my favorite card tricks and like I said for the summer But uh, this will be really done anytime that you really just want to impress somebody just right off the bat or anything like that um, But essentially you can do this to groups of people or just to one person But since this is you know summertime and everything you're probably gonna be doing this to more than one person So you want to show them a couple tricks that are really gonna blow uh, their minds, right? So this is gonna be I want to show you guys uh, three different card tricks and you know, the first trick is going to be really simple. This is going to be something that you can do with a borrowed deck. So that's why I'm, I'm teaching this first. And then the other two are going to be very specific. But if you have the right deck with you, um, you're really going to be able to blow some people away. So this is essentially um, the first trick that you can do, like I said, with a borrowed deck. All right, so you can start this trick off by showing your spectators the cards or whatever. And then you can have them go ahead and pick a card from this pile, right? So you go ahead, you have them pick any card that they want. And I'm just going to be showing you guys... The cards here. So in this case, this is going to be your card for the trick. I don't really want to look at it, but this is going to be the card that the spectator picked, and you can have them put it in the middle of this pile right here. So the way this works is you're going to go ahead, you're going to take the two piles, and you're actually just going to go ahead and mix them up, but not normally. You're going to go ahead and take the other pile and flip this face up. So at this point, what you're going to do is take the cards and mix them face up into face down. And I proved to you guys that this is really going up face down or face up in to face down. So if I show you guys the cards here like this, you guys can actually see the cards are going face up in to face down. Now what's gonna happen when I go ahead and take the deck behind my back for just two seconds, you're gonna see that with a snap like that, all I have to do is spread the cards and one card is going to reveal itself. And you guys could go ahead and let the spectators examine the deck and the only card remaining face up is going to be their card. So this is the first trick guys and uh, I'll go ahead and get to the other tricks and then show you guys how to do them. Alright, so uh, the next two card tricks that I'm going to be showing you guys, like I said in the intro, um, the first one is completely impromptu. Um, you can do that with one, you can do that one with a borrowed deck, but these two are going to be using specific decks. Um, but I am going to leave the uh, links in the description box. So if you guys do like or if you guys watch the video and like the tricks enough, you guys can actually go ahead and uh, buy the decks for yourselves. Now I'm going to be completely disclosed with you all. I'm going to get a little bit of commission if you guys happen to do so. So if you want to support the channel or if you genuinely want to buy these decks, go ahead and do so. Um, like I said before, guys, these are seriously two of my favorite card tricks. Uh, only because you can do them, you can go up to anybody and you will get just crazy reactions. Like they're not going to be able to figure out how you did these two card tricks. So like I said, guys, if you guys like the tricks, go in the description box. And um, anyways, here's the performance for uh, both of these card tricks. All right, so the first trick out of the other two that I'm going to show you guys how to do is the Invisible Deck. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and leave the link in the description box of David Blaine performing it, and you guys can see the kind of reactions you can expect to get out of it, only because you can have the spectator seriously pick um, any card in the deck, and that's going to be the only face-down card in the deck, and every other card is going to be face-up. So it's pretty crazy. You can have literally the spectator pick any card that they want to, and it's going to be the only face-down card every single time. So I'm going to show you guys this deck right here. Um, and Essentially, I'm going to use this, right? So let's say I told the spectator to pick a random card, and I don't know this card, right? So I'm going to show you guys this is completely legit. I have no idea what this card is. And let's say this is the card. I told the spectator to think of any card they want to. This is the card, let's say, per se, they thought of, right? So let's say they said the nine of spades. So you know that the spectator picked the nine of spades, and all you have to do, guys, is go through your invisible deck. And in just two seconds, you'll be able to show your spectators that uh, that their card, I think it was believed is the nine of spades, is the only face down card in the entire deck, just like this. So this is the Invisible deck, and uh, and then second, I'll show you guys how to do that as well. All right, so the last trick I'm going to show you guys for today um, in this little compilation video is the Brainwave deck. Now this one, um, I don't actually do this trick as much as the Invisible deck, only because I got really used to performing the Invisible deck, and that's one of the deck I carry around a lot, only because. I've had it for a lot longer, and this deck, I do believe that the Brainwave has a lot better um, an ending effect than, any, than the Invisible deck, and I will leave a link um, to the performance of, I think somebody performed it on Ellen, and the trick was really, really cool, so you guys can see exactly what that looks like, um, you know, done by somebody on TV and all that kind of stuff, but uh, this is essentially what the trick is going to look like. They can say any card, just like the Invisible deck, but the ending effect is stronger. So let's say they were to pick a card... Um, let's say maybe like the three of diamonds, right? So let's say you were to go through the deck and you're looking for the three of diamonds and you're sure spectator that their three of diamonds is the only card that's face up in the deck. But not only is it the only card that's face up, but it's actually the only red card that's face up. So like I said, guys, the effect is stronger. 
um, and I, you know, I'll show you guys how to do that in uh, just a second. All right, so the first uh, tutorial I'm going to go over is actually the um, with the first trick with the impromptu deck. Basically, um, you can take a borrow deck and you can simply do this trick, and the spectators are really going to be impressed. So, to start this one out, let's say the spectator goes ahead and they were to give you um, this deck of cards, right? So all you have to do. Um, there is a little bit of a setup, but really, guys, it's not that bad. So all you have to do is, let's say the spectator gives the deck. While they're not looking, all you want to do is flip over the bottom card, and that is going to be pretty much the setup. You're not done yet. All you have to do is flip over that bottom card as you're kind of misdirecting them, and what you want to do is cut that deck in half, and then hold the pinky break. So essentially, the top half of the deck is going to look like this, sandwiched with a card that's going to be face up on the bottom and then you hold that pinky break. Alright, so then from here you have your pinky break set up. All you have to do is tell your spectators uh, they're going to pick a card from this pile right here and all you have to do is cut the cards directly where the pinky break is. You cut the cards, you take the top half the deck, you put that on the table and then you spread the bottom half because this bottom half is going to be completely normal but this one is going to have this really easy, you know, it's basically reversible, so you flip it over and it looks exactly the same, right? So what you do, you spread the cards, you can pick up the cards that you actually put down. Um, now this, like I said guys, it's going to be reversible. So at this point, what you do is you say, right, so go ahead and pick one of these cards. And as you guys did that, so you have the cards on the table, you spread the deck, you pick these back up, you put these back in your hand. So, right, so go ahead and pick one of these cards, and as I did that guys, all I did was flip over that pile very easily. You point to these cards, and let's say they were to pick this card from the middle right, so it really doesn't matter. It's a random card. Let's say they pick the two of spades. You say, all right, so go ahead and put the two of spades. We're going to put this back in this pile. You put it back in this pile, which is now going to be completely face up minus this card right here. That's why you have that set up. You can push it in just like that, and at this point, you can square, or you can put this back on the table. Make sure not to flash any of those face up cards. All you have to do is square this back up. So, all right, so let's go ahead and mix your card in because I, I don't know where it is. You tell your spectators, I don't know where that card is going to be here, but let's go ahead and mix it up just a little bit more to make it more interesting. You flip over the bottom pile. What you do is you take these cards, but make sure not to flash any of the face-up cards. And what you want to do is shuffle the cards so you have them. You're doing a tabled riffle shuffle. All you're doing is doing this so that way the spectators can't see that the left-hand cards are all face-up, right? So what you want to do is very closely shuffle these two cards. That way the spectators can't see the cards are actually face up in the left hand. All you have to do is make sure that the last card on top is that actual face down card. At this point you just shove them together. You really are mixing these cards up and you can even show the spectators this as well by tilting the cards upwards, showing them that the cards are going to face to face and you can square these up just like that. And now at this point you're pretty much set up for the actual trick. It's very simple. Um, all the cards are going to be face up except for their card in the middle and then minus this card up top. So all you have to do at this point is tell your spectators that you're going to take these cards or take the deck behind your back and you're going to just kind of, um, you don't really explain what you're doing. You say, all right, I'm going to take the cards behind my back really quick. You put them back to the table and all you're doing is flipping over that top card behind your back and then flipping the deck over. So essentially, you say, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and take these cards behind my back. You come out and you, you can put the deck back on the table. And that's pretty much the trick. So you put these cards behind your back. You say, all right, so I'm going to take these cards behind my back really quickly. And just like that, I should have rearranged the deck. So at this point, you can snap your fingers or whatever. And then when you spread the cards, the only face-up card is going to be theirs. And like I said, guys, you will get really good reactions because, you know, you really just put, it looks like the cards are getting mixed up face-up to face-down. But in reality, all you're doing is flipping over that top card, and their card is going to be the only one face up and then from here they can inspect the deck or whatever but it is like I said if you do borrow the deck it looks like you know just like a regular deck of cards so then you can go into any routine you want to but uh, like I said guys that's just a really cool trick that you can do using a borrowed deck and then um, anyways guys I'm gonna go ahead and show you the other two tricks uh, right now alright so from here I'm gonna show you guys how to do the invisible deck I'm gonna kinda go over like um, it's basically how it works and all that and then some more performance tips so essentially this is the trick that I really perform a lot I carry this deck pretty much um, everywhere I go only because you can get seriously the best reactions because the spectators can pick any card in the deck and that is going to be the only face-up card so um, it's pretty mind-blowing the spectators are going to seriously you know think this is a crazy trick so this is the way it works um, essentially if you open up the pack um, whatever card they pick 
it's going to be face down because every single one of these cards is essentially face down. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So, um, brief explanation, when you spread through the cards, only one side is going to be even. As you guys can see, all these faces are all even cards. If I flip it over, all the cards on this side are odd. So it's going to look a little bit weird, but it might look like, um, you know, these are all single cards, but in reality, every single single card you see is actually two cards. It's a pair. So this two of diamonds is actually a paired with going to be the jack of clubs on the other side. As you guys can see, that's going to be the jack of clubs. And the way it works is the backs are rough. So the backs of the cards stick together just like that, but the faces are normal. So although the backs are a little bit rough, when you spread the cards, because the faces of the cards spread so smoothly, it's not going to untangle or unhinge that sticky back unless you actually add extra pressure in order to spread the card. So that's basically how it's done. Whatever card the spectator says, you go to its pair, and then you spread thickly on the pair just like that, and it's essentially just gonna pop out just like that. So here are some tips on how to perform it. Um, I'll do a couple test runs to show you kind of what I do during my actual performance and all that kind of stuff. And there's a little bit of a mathematical principle to it as well, so um, here are all the evens, and then here are all the odds, right? So when I set up the deck, I have all the evens on the front of the deck like this, so I know that this is the front of the box, and this is the back of the box, so if I pull out the cards from the front, only the evens are going to show. Now if I pull out the cards from the back, I know only the odds are going to show, right? So the way it works is every odds paired with an even, every spade is paired with the heart, and every diamond is paired with a club. Okay, so that might be a little bit hard to remember, but like I said guys, this is something I do a lot with the Invisible Deck, so I have it pretty much down pat. But essentially, if you want to get started, the way it works is everything is based off the number 13. So here are all your evens. Um, if they were to say a number, so I'm just going to have to show you guys by example because it is a little bit difficult to explain. But let's say they were to say a number like the seven of hearts. All right, so if they say the seven of hearts, you do 13 minus seven in your head, and you know that's going to be six. So if you're looking for it to pair with a six, and this is the even, so you take it out where the six is going to be showing. Because if you take the cards out and they say seven of hearts and you pull it out from the odd side, the seven of hearts is going to be faced up, so the trick isn't actually going to work. So you want to take it out from the opposite side. They say seven of hearts, all right? I know I'm pulling it out from the even side of the deck, so you do 13 minus seven, which is going to be six, and then now you have to figure out the suit. So they said seven of hearts, and you know hearts are paired with spades, so you know you're looking for the, uh, the, six, uh, the six of spades here. So you open up the deck, right? They say seven of hearts. It's okay, so you could have set in card and you can ask them if they want to change it or not, but essentially you're looking for that six of spades, just like that, because you know the seven of hearts is going to be right here. 13 minus seven equals six. Hearts go with spades, and that's essentially where the card is going to be able to be found, right? So here's basically my performance of it, and I'll do it with, uh, with an, uh, an even card so you guys can see how you could pull it out the other way. So let's say, for example, you tell your spectator this is how I perform it. I would give them the deck of cards so that way they know I'm not touching it. I'm um, going tell them, all right, so go ahead and think of any card, all right? Now imagine your card, imagine it, take it, flip that over in your head visually so that's the only face-down card in the deck and every other card is face up. And Go and shuffle that so that way the card's somewhere in that deck face down, and then um, what you're going to do is tell them that, all right, give me the deck back, and tell me what your card was, and let's say they said their card was going to be like the four of diamonds. All right, so they tell you it's the four of diamonds. At this point, you do 13 minus four, which is nine, right? So now you know you have to open the deck up from the odd side, so the nine is showing. So they said four, I think they said four of diamonds. All right, so four of diamonds, you know, you, you know diamonds are paired with clubs, so now you're looking for the nine of clubs. So you open the deck out, you can spread it, looking for that nine of clubs, because that is going to be where the four diamonds is. So you spread it, you make sure you can show all the cards, just don't spread too hard on the other ones, and that's going to be the four of diamonds, just like they said, guys. So you can really do it with any card um, in the deck, so that's the even and odd side of it, and then I'll show you guys what to do for the jacks, the queens, the kings, and the aces. So it might seem a bit tricky at first, but 
Um, the aces are going to be worth 1, and then 2 through 10 are worth themselves, and then jack, queens, and kings. Jacks are obviously 11, queens are 12, and kings are 13. So I'll do, let's see the spectator chooses an ace, right? So everyone's going to choose an ace the first time you ever chose them. So they're going to say the ace of spades, right? So you do 13 minus 1, which is 12. You know queens are worth 12, and they said spades. So you know spades are paired with hearts. So you open the deck up from the even side looking for that queen, because you know it's even. Queen of hearts, hearts with spades. So you look for the queen of hearts as you spread the deck. You see the queen of hearts. Now it's spread very easy because everybody says the ace of hearts. You can flip it over, and that's the ace of spades, just like that. So that's how you do a spade, um, or the ace of spades. And let's say they said a number like two, right? So if they said if they, said they wanted to pick a two, two of hearts or whatever, or let's do two of clubs, right? So they said two of clubs, you do 13 minus 2, which is 11, and you know clubs goes to diamonds, so you're looking for the jack of diamonds. You know jacks are odd. You open it from the odd end. You look for that jack of diamonds as you spread the deck. You're looking for it. You can spread it, show the other cards, and that is going to be the two of clubs just like that. So like I said, guys, it's very simple to get down. Um, it just takes some practice, and the kings are actually paired with themselves. Okay, so this is kind of tricky. So... The kings can be worth either odd or even, depending on what you want, but because 13 minus 13 equals zero, you can't really do that in cards, so the kings are paired with themselves. So all you have to worry about is the actual suit of it. So clubs are still paired with diamonds, and spades are still paired with the hearts. So I leave the black kings on the even side. So if they set a card like the king of, uh, the king of diamonds, it's not that impressive, so I'd ask them, okay, so you know, would you want to change that card and make it more random, or do you still want the King of Diamonds? So if they say, no, I still want the King of Diamonds, you can take the deck out from the even side and show them the King of Diamonds is the only card faced up, or face down, just like that. And it's not that impressive, but it still is the only face on card, so then again, it is. So, you know, it just depends on what you guys want to do. You can set up the invisible deck wherever you want. You can have the queens on top, so if you guys can see, you can have the queens on top. Um, either side, however you want to set it up. I just like the kings there because if somebody picks a king, I'll tell them to pick a more random card. So that way they can pick a card more towards the middle because it is more impressive when the card is directly in the middle. But it's all up to you guys. That is my little invisible deck routine and then I'll show you guys how to do uh, the brainwave card trick. All right guys, so this is the very last trick that I'm gonna go over and this one is gonna be using um, the brainwave deck. Now, it's very similar to the invisible, uh, the invisible deck but I do believe this trick has a stronger um, ending effect. And I'll leave a link to, I think I think it was um, Andrew Kelly, he went on Ellen and he used the Brainwave deck and you guys can see, you know, what kind of reactions you can get and, you know, a, diff a little different variation of how you can perform the trick. But I'll show you guys how to, how I perform um, the trick essentially and then, you know, kind of break down how it works. So, considering I already taught you guys um, the mechanics of the Invisible deck, the Brainwave deck is very, very similar. So, when you spread the cards out, Face to face, you're only going to be seeing 26 cards from the back, and then if you were to flip it out the other end, um, it's the only it's red cards, but it is um, only 26. So it's very similar, just like you know, every single single card is a double. Same thing for same thing for this packet. Every little card here or every little um, single is actually a double card with another card behind it. Um, it and the reason I don't do this one too much is only because I haven't had a chance to actually break in the deck. I've had it for, you know, um, I've had it for a while, I'd say close to a year, but only because I've been using the, the invisible deck so much, I actually haven't had a chance to really break this one in, only because I do like the invisible deck a lot. But here's how this deck essentially works. So on the front, these are going to be all the blue cards, so if the spectator says any red card, so if they were to pick like, if they were to pick maybe like either a heart or a diamond, you'd have to pull the deck out from the blue side. And if the spectator said a club or a spade, you'd put it to the red side. So obviously this deck isn't broken. And so you have the spades on top here. And then if you spread past the middle, you're going to have the clubs. So essentially what I did um, to help me with this deck is this is how the deck is set up. So the top card is going to be the ace of hearts. The second card down is the two of hearts. Then you have the three then the four, and it goes all the way down to the king of hearts, which is going to be right there. And as you guys can see, I put a really small, this is a little tip for you guys as well, I put a really small dot, I don't know if you guys can see that, I'll try to focus the camera so you can see that right there, I put a small dot right where 
the hearts turn into diamonds. That way, if the spectator says they want a diamond card, because essentially you have to count the cards. So if they were, say, like the four of hearts, for example, you're just spreading the cards over and you're spreading the fourth card down, which is going to be the four of hearts, right? So counting the cards isn't too big of a problem, but if they say a card like a diamond, for example, and you didn't really have that little dot there to kind of just let you know, okay, so you're, you're going to the diamonds now, you'd have to count 13 plus and then add on and then get to like the four of diamonds. So it would be a little more difficult, but since I did put that dot there, the spectators aren't going to see it, but at least there you can like reset your counter and then you can count from one starting from the dot again, which makes it really, really simple. So now you guys know how it works. It's very similar to, like I said, the invisible deck. All you have to do is spread the cards, count to where it is, spread them, and then when you flip it over, it's going to be an opposite card as well. So, you know, I haven't had that much time to actually use this in a performance, but I've done it a few times and the reactions are better than the invisible deck. But like I said, I've gotten so used to the Invisible Deck, I know how to take it out and everything. This is something I just still have to practice a little bit more. Um, but I do recommend this as this is probably one of my favorite card tricks. Um, and then I'll give you guys some performance tips as well. Obviously, um, we have a blue box here. So if a spectator picks a black card, and let's say it's just like the even and odds, how the even and odds are paired with the Invisible Deck, it depends on the way you turn it. But this is a blue deck, and if you go ahead and, you know, if they, if they choose to pick... Um, black card for example and you pull out the red deck from a blue box it might look a little bit suspicious maybe like you are trying to hide something so in my opinion what I do when I perform the trick is I have the spectators I pretty much do a magician's force right so I have the blue box in my pocket so they can't see that or you can hold it on to them or give it them to hold on to and I'll tell them okay so pick a color red or blue right so if they pick the color red Okay, so you want them to pick blue. So they, if they say red, okay, so, all right, so red cards, just imagine you throw all the red cards into a garbage can, so now we're just left with the blue cards. All right, so basically you force them to pick blue, and if they pick blue, well, then you just stick with blue. And then you ask them, and you want them to pick a red card, right? Because if you open it up from the blue side, right here, they're going to be left with the red cards. So you say, all right, so now think of a color, think of red or black this time. And meanwhile, the cards are still inside the box. And let's say, for example, they were to say black, right? So, okay, so then again, you can go, okay, so go ahead and think of all the black cards, throw those in a trash can. Now we're just left with the red cards. So essentially, you force them down to only the red cards. And then you tell them, okay, so red cards, we only have, what, aces and diamonds left. So then you tell them, all right, so think of a card, an ace or a diamond. And then at that point, they can say either one. And let's say they were to say hearts, right? Or hearts or diamonds, right? So let's say they were to say heart and maybe they want to pick a card like the nine of hearts right so any random card they pick the nine of hearts all you know you have to do is open the deck up and then count to that ninth card one you can just spread the deck you can count it off by threes or so and then eventually you can get to that ninth card very very easily and just like that it's going to be the nine of hearts is the only card that's face out so from here you say you know you could have picked literally any card you said the nine of hearts and not only is this the only face up card but it is actually the only red card in the deck. And that is pretty much the trick. So, in my opinion, the ending effect is a lot better. And you guys can check out Andrew Kelly's performance. But I just want to let you guys know what kind of card tricks are out there. Um, that, you know, for this summer you can really, really get some great reactions. So hopefully you guys like these tricks enough. You can go down there, support the channel, and buy them from the link. But if not, just thanks for watching. Hillary Carford, she's a literal vampire, belly goblin, goblin, bound, chasing after your mama, let's go and give it to